In this video I'm going to look at the section A, so the multiple choice section from the June 17 Paper 2 Organic Paper Synthesis and Analytical Techniques. So there's 15 questions, I'll put the first one on the screen, wait a couple of seconds, if you want to have a go pause the video and then I'll go through the answers and we'll just keep going until we've done all 15. So here's the first one. So this one's testing your knowledge for the testing for halide ions. So the reaction that's going to take place in general terms is this one. So your haloalkane reacts with water, it gets hydrolyzed and produces an alcohol, an H plus ion and a halide ion. And to detect the halide ion you need silver nitrate. So the answer was B. Question two. So this one's testing your knowledge of basic organic definitions. So I'll run through them all first. Aliphatic, compound containing carbon and hydrogen, joined in straight chains, branch chains or non-aromatic rings. Alicyclic is an aliphatic compound arranged in non-aromatic rings with or without side chains. Aromatic is simply a compound containing a benzene ring. Unsaturated, a compound containing a carbon-carbon multiple bond so carbon carbon double or triple bond or a benzene ring and finally saturated compounds containing carbon carbon single bonds only so statement a well it's wrong the first bit's wrong but the second bit's right statement b first bit's right but the second bit's wrong statement c both wrong statement d both right. So the answer was D. Number three. So for this question I'm going to represent the hydrocarbon as CXHY. So for complete combustion you're going to get X moles of CO2 and you're going to get Y over 2 moles of water because there are two hydrogens in a water molecule. So effectively because we get 40 centimeters cubed of each gas produced then we can say that we've got the same moles of gas being produced because if you think about it, the molar gas volume, moles equals volume over 24,000 cm cubed, you're going to get the same value for moles. So we get the same moles of gas produced, so therefore we can say that x equals y over 2, so therefore 2x equals y, so therefore the hydrogen count is double that of the carbon count. And the only one that fits that is C. Number four. So this one's testing your knowledge of EZ isomerism. So remember, you can only have EZ isomerism if the carbon-carbon double bond contains different atoms or groups of atoms on each carbon. So the first thing we can say is D can't show EZ because you've got two hydrogens on this carbon here. The Z isomer is when your priority groups are on the same side of the double bond. Your E isomer is when the priority groups are on opposite sides of the double bond. And to determine the priority group, you're looking for the atom with the highest atomic number directly bonded to the carbon. So in molecule A, there's your priority groups. In B, it's those two. And in C, it's those two. Remember, D can't show it. So B is the answer. Question five. So the thing to remember in this one is that any waste products are going to lower your atom economy. And addition reactions is where two reactants become one product. So in other words, all of your reactant atoms go into making the product. There's nothing else made. And so the answer must be D. Question six. So this question is testing your knowledge of VSEPR theory to, to work out the shape of molecules. So the first thing we'll do is look at how many pairs of electrons are around each of those four atoms. So in atom one, we've got four bonding pairs around there, three going to those hydrogens and one pair making this bond here. Atom two, we've got one to that hydrogen and then one, two, three, so four again. Atom three, We've got one, two, and a double bond count as one pair, so three. And in atom four, we've got four pairs of electrons again around there, one pair here, two pairs to those two hydrogens, but we've also got a lone pair on the nitrogen. So 
shape wise that's going to be tetrahedral tetrahedral trigonal planar and that one's going to be pyramidal so the answer was c number seven so this question is testing your knowledge of functional groups so remember secondary a means we've got two carbon groups bonded to the nitrogen but beware the amides so these two b and c are amides because you've got a nitrogen directly bonded to a c double bond door so they can't be an option so therefore this amine here has got one two carbons bonded to the nitrogen so that's going to be the answer this one here has got three this is a tertiary amine so the answer was a number eight so a chiral center is a carbon atom with four different atoms or groups of atoms bonded and in skeletal formula don't forget about the hydrogen that's not shown. So if we just look through the molecule now, we've got a chiral centre there, we've got one there, another one there, and that one there. So the answer was four, so the answer is C. Number nine. So if a molecule is saturated with no ring or it's not cyclic, then it has the general formula CnH2n plus two. If it's got a ring like this one, it becomes CnH2n, like the alkenes. So if this has got seven carbons, it must have 14 hydrogens. So the answer was C. Number 10. This one's testing your knowledge of functional groups. So molecule A is a base, because the lone pair on the nitrogen can accept an H plus ion. So this, is, well, this won't be acidic. B ethanoic acid is a weak acid so it is acidic but not really very much c is an ester and doesn't react with water unless you've got an h plus or oh minus catalyst in e actually reacts with water that's an acyl chloride and makes hcl so therefore that's going to be the most acidic and so the answer was d number 11 so the thing to remember here is if you've got symmetry in the molecule like we have got, then some of the hydrogens are going to be equivalent. So the molecule is symmetrical about here, so therefore those H's are equivalent, so are those, and obviously that's on its own. So the answer was 3, so C. Number 12. So this one's testing your knowledge of the reactions of carboxylic acids. So this carboxylic acid is going to react with two moles of sodium hydroxide. There's the equation. So if we've got 0.1 moles of that and 0.1 moles of that, then if we think about it, if we have 0.1 moles of the acid, we're going to need 0.2 moles of sodium hydroxide. So there's not actually enough sodium hydroxide to react with all of the acid. So if we think about it the other way around, 0.1 moles of sodium hydroxide is only needs 0.05 moles of acid. So the moles of water is going to be based on that. So therefore, if 0.05 moles of acid are reacting, we're going to get double that, so 0.1 moles of water are going to form. And therefore, the number of molecules is that times Avogadro's number. So the answer was A. Number 13. So this one's testing our knowledge of organic reaction pathways. So that big synthesis map. So the molecule we're trying to prepare is an amide. How do you make amides? You can make them from an acyl chloride and an amine. Well, that's what we've got in A, so that's the answer. Number 14. So this one's testing our knowledge of the radical substitution mechanism. So I'm just going to go through the mechanism for ethane with chlorine. So there's the initiation step. There's the first propagation step. There's the second one, and obviously termination is just you combine any of the radicals that have already been made. So which radicals have we got? We've got the chlorine radical and the ethyl radical. H radicals aren't part of this, so the answer was C. And finally, number 15. So this one's testing our knowledge of carboxylic acids and esters and their formulae. So we'll just look at the formulae first. Hexanoic acid is... C5H11COOH, ethyl butanoate, so remember esters are named backwards, so ethyl butanoate, so there's four carbons there, that's that one there, and propyl propanoate is that one there. They all have C6H12O2 as their molecular formula, 
So A was the answer.